Okay, so today I'm just going to do a very quick, simple little job um, on my Land Rover. It's to ease access to the rear doors. Um, standard rear doors don't open very far and it can be awkward getting things in and out or just getting in and out yourself. Um, so I've just made this little modification um, which as I say is very simple and if you've got the tools it's a 10 minute job. Um, obviously if you haven't got the tools then you can actually buy these um, kits but I think they're quite expensive. Um, I think they're about 50 quid a pair. But anyway, if you've got the tools, simple job, let's get on and I'll show you how to do it. Right, so let's take a quick look at the door I've already done. Uh, did this some months ago, never got round to the passenger side. Now, I don't know if you can see, that opens to almost 90 degrees. Not quite, but it's much, much more than the one the other side, as you can see. Let's take a quick look round the other side. You get more of an idea. It's been giving it a hoover out while I've taken all the mats out. You can see the difference. That's as far as the standard door goes. And if you've got a big box or even just a big bag, it's a pain to try and get it in there. So, what we've got to do is extend this point here back a bit or out a bit. I've just got to undo those two bolts and the bracket comes out so it's not difficult to get out. Let's have a little look at the one I've done. You can see the difference. If you, you see I've moved it out basically the the width of the nut or maybe a little bit more and that gives just so much more room. So let's whip this one out. Got the 13mm spanner. Actually it's not 13mm, it's a half inch but it fits exactly the same. I couldn't find my little ratchet spanner which would have made life a lot quicker but I think it's in the toolbox in the back somewhere. We've got a little washer on top of there and a little washer underneath. And that's that and before you go too far and start taking the, the other bit out you want to measure it. See exactly how far you need to bring it out. Now on this, it's worked out at about 12, uh, 21 mil from centre to centre. And the critical measurement um, that makes you know, makes you know how far you can come out um, is this one up here. If you're not careful, if you go too far, your door will hit on your B post. So I set it so that I've got about eighth of an inch, between eighth and three sixteenths between the door skin and the, the B post and that allows for a little bit of movement and that gives me as I say about 21 mil something like that I suggest you all measure your own with Land Rover tolerances it could be different on every single vehicle but mine's about 21 so that's what we've got to aim for is to uh, extend it by about 21 mil cool, they've never been out that's a bit tough And that one. I don't quite know why these bolts are so long in here. It's not like they're going into much. They're just going through a skin into a captive nut. But they're about an inch and a half long. But I suppose they just buy a box full of inch and a half bolts and they'll do for a multitude of operations. Never mind. Right, they're out. And that's it. Simple as that. Let's go and modify it. So the first thing you want to do is take out the stud. It's spot welded in so it should come out fairly easily. And the way I get it out is I've got an old nut. Just put it on the top. Obviously so that the thread doesn't come through. Keep your vise just open enough to to accommodate the the base of the stud. So it's just in and give it a whack. Simple as that. Doesn't take a lot. They're not uh, particularly strong spot welds. At the end of the day, all it's got to do is stop the nut, uh, the, the stud turning. 
So there you go. Hang on to that because we want that. We'll put that back in. So what we've got to do is find a piece of metal that we can extend this out by or with. Um, it's about eighth thick. So we'll see what we can find. Must have something kicking about. Right, I've got this bit of it's actually stainless um, because it is it comes in this strip and I found this little off cut that I've been using for something else. It's a little bit wide but we can cut it down. So I've overlapped the bracket and I'm just marking the shape. You don't have to do that, you could butt it up and then just fill in the weld or fill it in with weld. But as I say it's a bit wide, so I'm just gonna cut it down about that much. Let's find a, no that's no good as a straight edge. I've right, got a ruler here somewhere. Right, let's just mark that. It's only rough. And then just scribe on my 21mm centre to centre. It's about there. Let me sharpie and just put a a mark where that's going to go. That's going to be about the centre of my new hole. And then we'll, once we've cut it all out, we'll radius the top accordingly. There's no point doing that first because you might as well weld it on before you, then you've got something to, to hang on to. But I'm going to cut the basic shape out first. Actually, that washer, I haven't dropped it on the floor. Actually, yeah, that'll work quite nicely to get me radius. Just scribe around that. There you go. That's basically the shape we want, if you can see. I'm going to cut that bit out of the end, cut it off square and weld it on. So I'm just going to cheat, do it with the angle grinder on a disc. Can't be bothered to get the hacksaw out. And I have all these grinders. I think I've got four grinders. I've got one with a cutting disc, one with a grinding disc, one with a flap disc, and one with a wire wheel on. So I'll just pick the one up I need for the job. So that it's not like I have to keep changing wheels and things. When you're in this sort of working environment, you never know when you're going to need them, so it's handy to have all of them at hand. And I think I've got two Makitas, a Black and Dacker, and a Dewalt. No, for no other reason than it's what happens to come up at a reasonable price. I think all but one second hand. Right, that's just with the ordinary grinding wheel. That's just sort of rounded off that little end, so we'll just see if it's going to fit. That's close enough for me. So we'll just cut that piece off just past where I'm going to radius it. And then what we'll do, we'll weld it on and then radius it and drill it because at least we've got something to hold on to then so see if I can find it flew somewhere on the floor right I'm back I found it I'm just going to take a bit of a chamfer off on this bracket on both sides, not a lot, just enough to give us a bit of a decent weld, and then do the same on the, the little piece that we've just cut. Now it'd probably be much quicker for me to zap this with the MIG, um, but I'm trying to learn how to use my TIG so I'm forcing myself to do it with TIG today um, purely as practice 
There you go. I've got a nice bee in there now. Get a good drop of weld and then we'll radius it one and drill it once we've got it all welded up. So let's see if we can tigger up. Right, I've got it on the bench. Got me third hands in there and I'm just going to put a tack on there. Doesn't need a lot. And then see if I can get a tack on the other end. Can't really get in very well. Let's move that thing around. Again, I I, sh I suppose I should have um, put a smaller cup on this. But I've been using it for doing some outside corner joints. A nice big gas lens is quite handy for that. Right, so I don't know how I'm going to get to it easily because I need to be able to prop my hand. If I can to get a decent run, I've been practicing on straight lines, and that's easy. But when you put obstacles in the way, like angles and bits sticking up and having to go around corners, it sets a bit more of a challenge. And that's why I'm, when I can, trying to muck about with this and and learn it. And I think I'm running this a bit hot. I um I think I've got it up at about 120 amps. I think I could have gone down a bit. It's not too bad there. I've just blown the corner off so I'm just gonna tack a bit more on the corner there. Went a bit harsh there. That's not bad. It's got it. So I think it's a little bit hot. But we'll um, try and do the same from the back. With it having a, a V in there, it's actually quite thin in the middle, so you can see there's a bit of penetration. Um, I've got it stuck. Oh, right amateur. Never mind. We'll get there. I've got my rod stuck there, so I have to spark up again. You can see it's blown that corner off again, the beginning corner, so I think it was running a bit hot. Never mind, you live and learn. I shall know for next time. I'm going to fill that in. And then we'll be laughing. So let's set that up. Have another go. As if by magic, there it is, because I forgot to turn the camera back on. <laughs> anyway, never mind. I filled it in. Give it a quick brush up. And then we'll go and grind it off. Right. Flap disc it off. Once it's nice and smooth, we can start putting the radius on. Take those corners off. Just gently round it up, take that bit of big lump of weld off there that I put on you can spend you know, loads of time doing this, you can file it, you can do whatever you like to um, make it as neat as you like All right. There we go, it's on. Do the other side. Sorry, I haven't really set the camera in the best position here to see what I'm doing. Well, you can tell what I'm doing, but you can't really see what I'm doing. Not particularly 
the device isn't in a particularly good place to be able to, be able to get a camera at because I can't get to the, the back of it really. There's too many things in the way to stick the tripod so I always have to come from this side. So Sorry about that but there you go. Anyway, there we go. Right. Okay, so now what we can do is go over and drill it. I've got this little tiny center dot there ready. So let's go. Error. Cock up of the day. I forgot to fill the blooming hole up, didn't I? The old one. So, let's go and fill that up. Then we can go over to the drill. Right. Filled that up. Schoolboy error that was. So now we can go over and drill it. Let's go. Right, with this being a bit of stainless, got this running nice and fast. I'm just going to put a, a little spot in it and then drop on my cutting fluid and whip through it fairly quickly. Stainless is a funny thing, it can work hard and very quickly. Very often, if I'm use, working with stainless, I won't bother with a pilot hole. I'll go straight through with the size I want because you can find that after you've piloted it the the small hole that you're now going to try and open up has gone hard and you end up buggering your your bigger drill so sometimes it's easier just to go straight through with the the uh, the size you you want to end up with luckily this stainless is quite good stuff I don't know what it is but it doesn't seem to work hard and like that I inherited it out of a skip all right that's a tight fit, which is what I wanted. So, before we tack that in, we're just going to go and make sure it, it actually works. So, I've just fitted it back in hand tight. I'm just going to stick it on. I'm not going to bother with the nut. Just see if we've got our our gap than we have. It's just right. And so it's just over eight. It doesn't look a lot from this side. It's difficult to see because of the reflection on the bodywork, but it is more than it looks. Alright, so I'm just going to tack this stud back in. So all it needs is a couple of tacks because it's literally just got to stop the the bolt from turning or the stud from turning. Turn it round, do the other side. See if I can get this propped up. Put my third hand on the vice grips, hold it in place, get a bit of an earth. A little tack on there. And that'll do it. So I'll give it a quick wire brush up with my electric wire brush, get all the muck off it, and then we'll give it a paint. Alright, so I've got my rattle can, a bit of primer, and don't forget underneath, like that, because you always let it dry and have a look and you've missed a bit underneath. So just hang that up. It's pretty warm today so that will dry quick. Very quick I should think. I'll go and get on with something else whilst that's drying. Right, that's dry so just give it a quick top coat. I'm just using satin black. It's the stuff I use. It's a, a car paint again, but it's the stuff I use on a lot of my ironwork. If people don't want it natural, satin black is the favoured colour. Looks gloss at the moment, but that will dry satin once that's done. Alright, hang that one up. Let that dry, and I'll go out and 
carry on hoovering. Okay, so it's dried. You can see it's gone satin. Let's go and fit it back in. See if it works. All right. Bolt it back in with these extremely long bolts. I don't quite know where they go to, but I'm pretty sure you can see daylight through them. I don't quite know how. Mind you, on these land roads, you can see daylight through everywhere. I spend the summers, when it's nice and dry, uh, looking for gaps and going round with the, the silicon sealer, filling them all up. It's amazing where you can find holes. Just stops you getting wet carpets in the winter and that nasty damp smell that you get. Alright, just gonna tweak them up. Give them a torque up. That's tight enough. Washer. Arm um, second washer. Lock nut. I can't figure out what I've done with my spanner. There it is, left it in the shop. Just do it up and then just tighten back it off a bit. So, make sure they're tight. Yep, they're good and tight. There you go, works. A treat. Let's check the tolerance at the door. Yeah, look at that. It's, as I say, it looks worse. Let's see if it looks better this side. No, I can't get my camera close enough to the door. Shut the viewfinder. I still can't really see, but there's, trust me, there's a decent amount of gap there, even if someone sort of flings the door open. So there you go, might help a few people save a few quid. Thanks for watching. I hope it works out for you.